What's up, nature freaks? Dave and Jeremy back again for episode two of the quarantine videos. Everybody's stuck inside, so we're gonna continue to pump out the educational and fun videos. Today we're gonna to be featuring green iguanas, which is likely the only iguana you've heard of. Although there are 35 different species, and if you wanna talk about the entire family, there's over 1,250. So get ready to climb into the canopy for a little nature in your face. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Nature in your face! All right, well, here you go. Three green iguanas, which is kind of misleading considering these two are green and orange, and this one is bright blue. But we'll talk about the color later. These are the reptiles that started it all in the pet trade back in the early 1970s. Boas and iguanas were super common as pets, and from there, it just turned into every other reptile on the planet as a pet. Yeah, I mean, I personally, um, my mm -hmm. first actual reptile that I bought was a green iguana. Unfortunately, I had no idea what I was doing back then. It did not live that long. And the green iguanas, they've kind of come a long way. For a while, they were your throwaway garbage pet. Like, we really didn't treat reptiles that well. They were being just brought in from Central and South America by the hundreds. Most of them were sick and unhealthy when you got them. But now, you know, they can be captive bred, especially in Florida where they're invasive. Yeah, and I, it's come a long way. And the reason people were, were, it wasn't that they weren't taking care of them. It's that nobody knew anything about them. But as people had these in captivity and learned how to heat them and feed them and house them properly, I mean, a green iguana is a pretty simple animal to have as a pet. Depending on the pet owner, they can make a good pet. And the one thing I've realized about iguanas is it's one of the few reptiles that have individual personalities. You know, snakes, they kind of behave the same. Definitely. Berm, they act like a berm no matter, you know, uh, how many of you have. Well, these, I've raised a lot of them from hatchling up to adult. One might be super gentle, like the ones that are sitting here, and you might have one that just wants to whip your face off and bite your <laughs> eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Now, don't be mistaken, we do put a lot of time and work into these animals. Some of them, like Gumby, all right, it's a rescue iguana. Love someone, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone pre-owned Gumby. Now the reason it's Gumby is because they have a, <clears throat> a bit of an overbite, like, hey, Gumby, <laughs> all right. Now Gumby is missing a toe. His tail has a kink in it. I'm not really sure of his history. It was just given to us. So we don't really know what kind of injuries he sustained, but now Gumby's doing awesome. Now the reason they're green iguanas is because when they hatch out of their egg, Normally they are bright, bright green. green. Right. And then they're yeah, they actually fit their name. Mm -hmm. And then the males, and this is a breeding thing to advertise to the females that they're ready to breed. They have these high orange colors. Now, the blue one over here is actually a green iguana. It's just lacking all the yellow color pigment. As you know, when you mix blue, or I'm sorry, green with yellow, you get blue. If you're lacking the yellow pigment, you're gonna come out like this. So it's kind of rare in the wild, but you can breed them to be this color. So it's just kind of popular to have a cool color in captivity. They sell like hotcakes once you start breeding them to be cool colors like this. Yeah, I mean, I love the uh, the <laughs> orange, you know, just like, hello, ladies, check this out. I mean, guys, jot this down. You can totally use this. You get some pit stains from hitting the gym, leave them. Let them flourish, you know. <laughs> They'll just be flocking to you. <laughs> That's right. Now, um, some cool things. So these are highly arboreal lizards. They love to climb. And if you've ever seen them in the wild, I mean, they will get way up in the trees 40 plus feet just sitting on the tiniest branch. It's ridiculous. There are yep. huge branches and they like to find the smallest ones that they can easily escape from. Now, another advantage of being an arboreal animal is this is an herbivore. So <clears throat> they pick on those little fruits and flowers and leaves that grow on the trees that they're sitting in. It's kind of like if you're sitting on the couch watching TV and there's a pizza tree growing in front of your face. You just... So <clears throat> easy to <laughs> easy to feed in captivity as well. I just buy spring mix. I give them collard greens, mustard greens. So there's a variety of foods. You don't have to go out in the rainforest or order rainforest leaves. That All this time. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, what is really cool is <clears throat> I like to tell people lizards are like cats. Hairless cats. So hypoallergenic cats. No mm -hmm. one's sneezing around the iguanas. But it's a good um, thing in today's like, day. And age. Yeah, right? <laughs> like many of you knew uh, or know I grew up in Florida and I knew people who had iguanas that just roamed their house. And what was crazy is just like a cat or a dog, they would go 
to a sliding glass door and and scratch and they would just let them out they would use the bathroom in the yard yep. and then come back in so that just shows you their intelligence you know they're not just dumb animals they can easily be trained now interesting in the wild I call these the biggest liar in nature. Now, because they're herbivores, they don't necessarily need a powerful jaw and big teeth, although you wouldn't want to get bit by one, but we're talking about in the South American rainforest where you have big cats like jaguars, you even have the smaller ones that climb, like these guys, like the ocelots and the margay. Look at this guy. He's puffing up this dewlap. It makes his head look larger. These spikes are not sharp, but to a predator, maybe a bird of prey, when they see this, you could be intimidated by that. It's like having a fake cactus. Hey, I don't know if I want to grab that with my mouth or my claw. I could get imp impaled or, 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 you know, poked by that. They leave them alone. They do push-ups, puff themselves up with air, make them look bigger and better, like that guy walking down the beach when the pretty girl comes by. Right. And he just deflates and his belly comes back Or if back you're up. a teenager and you're at the mall, you're like, Sheila! <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so that's the way of communication. You know, they can't <clears throat> speak, so they use that body language. It's like a little warning flag. They just get that do left out. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, yo, not what's up. If you come over here, I'll rip your face off, basically mm -hmm. is how that goes. If you look on top of the head, they got this really cool third eye. It's known as the parietal eye. It sits right in the middle. It's looks like they're like a window into the skull. It's able to see light and shadow over it. So if a predator flew over the iguana, it could easily detect that. And now, I do have the jaw of a green iguana. And we can show the teeth up close. I why, 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 why didn't I see this? I've never. I've oh, never well, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna. We'll get it out. And we'll do a little close up with us. So they can mm. see the teeth there. Oh, right, cool. Well, we can see this little eye spot here, and then you have the external eardrum. So <clears throat> these things can see very well. They can hear very well. They don't need that real powerful sense of smell like the snakes because obviously they use visual cues to pick up the bright colored uh, fruits and flowers and things that they eat. So of all the reptiles, the iguanas don't have the best sense of smell because they don't need it. That's right. So if you check this out, I got the jaw in hand and you can see how jagged the teeth are right here. I mean, look at that. You would not want to get bit by this. I mean, they are super serrated if this i mean these are used for tearing through vegetation but if it got into your skin you could be in a world of yeah, and almost as bad as the teeth are getting whipped by the tail in fact we have to proceed with caution just mm. picking these things up because you will rip your hand open on top of that to make it even worse they can whip you it's like somebody swinging a saw blade at your face <laughs> yeah right so we don't recommend <clears throat> recommend these as a uh, beginner animals now they can be super rewarding just like any other animal if you put the time in and the effort they can make incredible pets. You know, like I said, they, like you see here, they'll just sit. They can be trained like a cat to use a litter box. Even inside of their enclosure, they will use the water or they'll dig in a certain spot. But if you just go out and grab a green iguana on a whim and expect it just to come out and love you, that's not going to happen. And you cannot keep it in a fish tank. You're going to need literally a walk-in closet with a huge climbing area. So just setting up the enclosure can be really difficult for a beginner, especially if you don't have the space, the room, or the money to, to invest in that enclosure to keep it alive. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to pick this one up. Let's check this out. You guys see these toes? Show, show them through the stanky look leg. Look at that. Grappling hooks. Yeah, I mean, awesome. look at those crazy toes, claws. We do have to trim their nails just because we do shows. We hand these to children. I mean, kids get to hold these things. It's, I mean, that's what is incredible about being able to do what we do, travel around, let people actually get a hands-on experience with these. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap this episode up. As you guys know, we're going to be making several others, so stay tuned for more Nature in Your Face. Woo!